To manually enter a bill of lading, click the new button. You will enter the date and time of the pickup according to what's on the bill of lading. Enter the BOL number. This field is alphanumeric. Any input field that has the binoculars icon above it is a searchable field. You can click on the binoculars to bring up a search window or you can just press the F2 key. You can choose the correct pickup point using a drop down list. In our demo we only have one rack set up for this vendor. The choice of the rack determines the unit cost and the taxes we will pay on the purchase. There are hauler, truck, and trailer defaults set up for your company during file building. Each field has a drop down list of other available choices. Performance reports for company drivers and vehicles are populated through bill of lading entry, so it's important to get the right hauler or common carrier inputs here. All of Commander's input programs are designed to allow the user to use keyboard strokes rather than mouse clicks to move through data entry. This lets users enter transactions more efficiently. You can use either the Tab key or the Enter key to advance from one field to the next. The correct unit cost is read into the program from Commander's Vendor Price File. Once you tell Commander the date and the time of the pickup, the vendor, the pickup point, and the product, it will go get the correct price. However, this cost can be overridden in the instance where you want to pass a rack discount onto a customer. Changing this value will create an entry in the event log, which is an exception report for management. If a carrier has charged you a surcharge fee, such as for wait time or split load, you would enter that amount here. Now we can enter the drop information. Now if you don't remember the customer ID, press F2 for a customer list. You can have as many customer ship to addresses as you need. If the ship to is in a state, county, etc. that's different than the customer's main address, Commander handles the taxes automatically. Ship to also controls customer pricing and freight table selection. The system automatically assigns these numbers. This will become the customer invoice number. Therefore, at this point, this bill of lading is tied to particular customer invoices for auditing purposes. Customer 2200 is a wholesale customer. We don't really know or care how he has his tanks numbered according to the products within the tanks. So what does this number here mean? Commander is updating what is called the in-transit bulk plant, which is a convention within Commander that will allow you to track in great detail just the rack direct portion of your business. A big benefit of this is that you can pull P&Ls on just your rack direct business anytime you want to. We are dropping 4,000 gallons to customer 2200. The bill of lading program reads in the markup that we have set for that product for this customer ship to, which is three cents above rack. Since not all product has been dispersed, the program automatically goes back to prompt you for another drop entry. You cannot complete the entry of a bill of lading until all gallons have been disposed of. Instead of dropping the rest at a wholesale account, we are going to put it into our bulk plant. Of course, an invoice will not be produced for this drop, but the on-hand quantity and a recalculated weighted average unit cost will be calculated as soon as this BOL is posted. In this instance, the tank number is in fact our bulk plant tank number one, which holds 87 octane. The quantity here defaults to the remainder of the load. 3.70925 unit cost will now blend in with the former weighted average unit cost to give us a new weighted average cost. We save the entries and mark this one ready to post. We've jumped over to the customer invoicing program to see that invoice number 228 is there waiting to be finalized. If we don't need to edit anything on the invoice or add any product or fee to it, we can print it immediately. And this is the resulting customer invoice. It only takes a couple of minutes to manually enter a BOL for a wholesale drop and produce a customer invoice that is correctly priced and taxed. It takes even less time if you use electronic bill of lading import. There is a separate episode for that.
Click the New button to manually enter a new BOL. Enter the date and time of the BOL for the product that was pulled from the rack. The default transaction code of 27 tells Commander that this was a charge purchase. Then you enter the BOL number. Then you enter the fuel vendor and the rack from which the fuel came. By capturing hauler information here, hauler and carrier activity reports get populated. We are going to blend some biodiesel. This is the petroleum diesel product ID first. Record the gross and net gallons from the BOL. Notice the unit cost automatically got read into the program according to the date and time, the vendor, the pickup location, and the product ID, this is the correct cost. This cost comes from the vendor price file. Now we enter the drop information. Notice that when we start to enter a drop, the data row of the product about to be dispersed highlights. If you have more than one product in the pickup window, this feature helps keep you oriented about which product you are dispersing. Any invoices showing on the front screen have not been finally processed. In this case, these two have not been printed or posted. This is one of the features of Commander that disallows transactions to go missing. A dialog box pops up to make sure that you know that you are blending. This customer buys net gallons, so that value is automatically used here. We have set this customer up with a unit price of $3.95.9 for this blended product. We set customer prices up in the customer price maintenance file. A is the code of the freight table that we use for this customer when selling him diesel product. Freight codes are assigned at the ship to level for each customer in the customer maintenance program. We are done with that component and so we save it. So now we go back and enter the bio product. At this point, we change the transaction code so that Commander knows we are pulling product from our storage. We already own it, so this part of the transaction is not a charge purchase. For the BOL number, you can enter anything meaningful. Ames trainers will recommend that you use the BOL number associated with the first half of the transaction and add a character such as B for bio or E for ethanol. Use the same vendor as for the first part. This will make this transfer of product out of your storage appear in proper sequence on BOL movement reports for vendor 1. Enter the item ID of the bio product. We are making a B20 blend. By clicking through the unit cost field, you tell Commander to go get the current weighted average cost of the product that is in your bulk plant. Simply drop this fuel to the same customer, same ship to, same reference number. Label it as the same product as before. The correct unit selling price gets pulled in again. Now you save this part and mark the transaction ready to post, and you're done. Now we have jumped to customer invoicing to show the resulting customer invoice. This invoice was automatically created as a result of the BOL entry. We can edit the invoice in any way we need to. If no editing is needed, we can print the invoice and get it off to the customer. Commander has taken two components and produced an invoice of one line item, correctly priced, taxed, and with the correct freight rate. Commander's BOL entry program lets you see all details of the pickup and delivery on a single screen. Because everything is in front of you and you don't have to change entry screens, no required data can be accidentally left out.
Let's begin by looking at a customer inquiry screen. This shows that this customer has had invoice number 228 posted to his account. Normally, we would be done with this transaction, but we've made a mistake on this one and we need to yank it out of the system and then redo it. We are in the BOL Entry Program. To display all bills of lading that can be reversed, we click on this radio button. Manifest number 9000 generated the customer invoice that is an error, so we select that one. And we simply click the reverse button. You get a nag box that wants you to be sure that you are doing what you think you want to do. And that's it. That's all you do. Commander has taken bill of lading number 9000 and put it back into the queue of bills of lading that need to be disposed of just like nothing has happened. And it has also erased a posted customer invoice, which means corrections to tax files, general ledger, and so on have also been made. Don't forget that although you have erased this transaction in one sense, in another sense you have not because a complete audit trail has been created that shows the original entry and then the reversal of that entry, who did it, date, time, etc. Let's look at the customer's account again. And here we see very clearly that a reversal has been done. It's more than the simplicity of the process to the end user that's important. It is that the reversal has been done absolutely correctly and thoroughly accounting-wise. No missed steps that could have created some real headaches later. Any invoices showing on the front screen have not been finally processed. In this case, these two have not been printed or posted. This is one of the features of Commander that disallows transactions to go missing. Commander will assign the next invoice number. Or if you use handwritten invoices and want to enter those invoices to the system after the fact, you can input an invoice number here. Transaction types are charge sale, cash sale, charge return, cash return, credit memo, and debit memo. The default is charge sale. This captures which branch's inventory the transaction actually affects. You can have a customer set up as a branch one customer, for example, meaning that their accounts receivable in sales history is kept under branch one, but occasionally you sell them product out of a bulk plant other than branch one. Click the binoculars icon for a search screen or just press F2. We know the customer ID in this case, so we'll skip that. Immediately, you see this customer's current credit balance, and it is the true current credit balance. Later, you'll see how this invoice, before it's posted or even printed, updates this display. A list of alternate ship twos displays. You can input a one-time temporary ship to by clicking on this button, say if it's a logging or a construction site. If you preload fuel, you can create an invoice ahead of time. Then, when you are ready to deliver the product, you can come back to the invoice and enter the current date and time, and then update the price-grabbing feature in this program, and Commander will get the current rack price and update your selling price accordingly if there has been any change. Once the customer and ship to have been identified, more information pops in. You can change the terms on this invoice from the default you have set up for this customer, and you can change the salesman assigned to this account. If a purchase order is required for this customer, Commander will remind you and prompt you for it. Entry into this program can be accomplished without a mouse. Just tab or enter through the fields. Commander will advance to each field in sequence. The Product button is now highlighted, meaning that when you press Enter again, you will go to the Product Entry screen. If you don't know the product ID, just do a search. If you press the F11 key, you will see a list of products this customer has bought. This makes it easy to duplicate a past order. The customer has asked for the same motor oil he bought last time, so all we have to do is choose the product. And doing that makes the previous quantity fill in too. In this example, it's for one case. But he wants five cases, so we overwrite that. 
Notice that the freight table has already been selected. Also notice the unit price of the last sale is in place, but what if there has been a price change? Just press Control u to get the most current price. You can give one-time line item discounts. And let's add another product. Diesel product. It's no problem selling fuels and lubes on the same invoice, of course. Commander knows which bulk plant tank this grade of diesel comes out of. You can have more than one tank with the same product, which is why you have a drop-down list available here. Look at the message box. You can type in any amount of text needed referenced to this line item. The message will appear under this item's description on the invoice. You might want to advise of special handling requirements, for example, for customers who don't normally buy this product. A window appears for this product. This means we have set up a comment about this product. Anytime this product is sold, this window pops up containing whatever reminders or instructions you want your users to be aware of. It will dissolve by itself. We are selling 1,500 gallons of diesel. This is the customer's price for this product. It can be changed here, but if it is, an exception event is recorded in the event log for management to see. We're done entering products and we save our entries. Now notice that the customer's line of credit has been updated. You see in real time how this sale will affect it. And here's the invoice. If we need to make no changes, we mark it ready to post. Now let's edit one of these pre-existing invoices. We need to change payment terms before we finalize this one, so we click the Payments tab. And then double click here. Click this button because this is a new payment type we are adding to the default terms of charge sale. We can search within the other allowed forms of payment. We expect some cash upon delivery which the customer has agreed to. You just enter the amount of cash. This is a reminder box that pops up if a customer is over his credit limit. And here's another one. So if the customer is on the phone with you or if he's standing right in front of you at the sales counter, you can remind him of the situation. If he needs his memory jogged, you can quickly access a list of his open items through the customer inquiry program. This invoice shows the expected cash payment. Commander's point of sale program has been designed to give the user an efficient way to invoice your customers with all information your personnel are likely to need available immediately. Besides entering charge purchases, other options are cash purchases, charge returns, and cash returns. The Vendor Invoice Number field is alphanumeric. If you don't remember the vendor's ID, you can press F2 or click on the binoculars icon. If you have more than one pickup point for fuel for this vendor, a drop-down list is available. The pickup point helps determine the taxes associated with a fuel purchase. Here you enter the bottom line total of the invoice. Don't worry about taxes and fees. Commander pulls these in automatically in just a moment. By backing into the invoice total, Commander makes sure you are being charged the right taxes and fees and the right unit cost. Click the mouse and pull up a list of all bills of lading from this vendor which have not yet been matched to an invoice. For this vendor, there are three bills of lading still unmatched. Referring to the invoice again, we determine which bills of lading to associate with this invoice. And it's this one, and this one. All you have to do now is click Apply. 
If the invoice's unit cost is correct and the units are correct, the total with taxes and fees that Commander will calculate should match the invoice total you entered. The total in the tax field was Commander generated. Our entry balances. That's all you have to do to input a fuel supplier invoice. You are certain that this purchase updated the right tax and fee files. In some instances, payment of portions of fuel invoices, such as certain taxes, can be deferred until a future date. Commander makes it easy to change payment terms for an invoice on the fly. In this example, we are saying that $3,900 of the taxes are deferrable until a date next month. We enter the amount that should be deferred. And then we change the payment terms. And you see the due date for this portion of the payment changes. To finish this invoice, we assign the remainder to be paid on the normal due date. And Commander will automatically populate the entry with the remainder. Save the entries and you're done. Someone familiar with the use of this program can input a fuel invoice in less than 30 seconds. And remember, as with the rest of Commander, you only touch a vendor invoice one time. Any delivery tickets showing on this screen have not been finalized, meaning they have not been converted to invoices. Let's create a new delivery ticket. If you have watched the point of sale invoice demo, this screen should be familiar to you. You enter a delivery ticket almost exactly the way you enter a point of sale invoice. Enter the date if this is not for the current date. The current date and time is the default. Commander will sequentially number your delivery tickets. Charge sale is the default, but you can choose cash sale if needed. You can even move product out of your bulk plant to a consignment dealer or a company-operated C-store with this program. You can do a cash return if necessary. All of this customer ship to's display. If you are delivering to a temporary job site, click this box and an entry screen will appear that will let you enter the address. According to the zip code you enter, Commander will know how to tax this delivery, provided you already have that zip code set up in your tax profile tables. The delivery ticket program is designed to enable the user to keep their hands on the keyboard and away from the mouse. You use the tab key or enter key to advance from field to field. Right in the middle of the user's view is a summary of the customer's line of credit. On the bottom left, you see the hauler information. You can use the drop downs to select drivers and vehicles. Also notice the tax box. You can make Commander apply taxes based on the bulk plant location rather than the point of delivery, which is the default. If there are any comments about the customer, product, this transaction, or miscellaneous, you can see that here. Clicking on any of these boxes will open the comment. Comments do not appear on any customer documents. Comments are only for internal communication. Now we pull the product. Just like with the point of sale program, Commander lets you see and if necessary choose a product that this customer has bought previously. Press the F11 key to see this list. If they are buying one of these products now, just select it. This display shows how many they bought last time and the unit price and extended amount. This is the low sulfur diesel tank at the bulk plant. You can have more than one tank with the same product, which is why you can choose another tank number. But only tanks with the same product would be available for selection. The sale code is a tax code. It's one of the things that enables Commander to apply the correct taxes on sales. You can override the default. That creates an exception event that management can see. The system also knows that customers 1700, when they buy this product, are assessed a freight rate based on freight table A. That can be overridden, but again, that creates an exception event. This animated pane displays a comment specifically applied to this product. It will disappear in a few seconds or when you advance to the next entry field. 
we expect to deliver 750 gallons. This is the customer's price for this product. It can be overridden, but guess what happens if someone does that? One-time or infrequent discounts can be applied to this line item. All we are going to deliver is diesel, so we save our entries and proceed. If the customer has any late invoices, you will see this. Presumably, the user will often be on the phone while taking the order, so the opportunity is there to talk to the customer about this. Now let's print the ticket. Notice how this unposted pending sale updates the customer's line of credit in real time. Just like with point-of-sale invoices and customer statements, if you embed a bitmap file of your company's logo in Commander, it will appear up in the header of the delivery tickets. This delivery ticket is an example of a full ticket, meaning that the ordered quantity, unit price, and extended amount display. Other options are available to suppress the quantity, unit price, and extended amount. You can select different delivery ticket styles by customer ship to. And at the bottom are your signature lines. So your driver goes off with the product, and when he returns, you will convert this ticket into an invoice. Our driver is back and we have the signed ticket. We go into the delivery ticket conversion program. Here we see all delivery tickets not yet finalized. Let's bring this ticket into edit mode. Was it delivered as ordered? If yes, you just click yes and the conversion to an invoice happens. All you do then is print it and deliver it. But if no, as we will show here, you are put back into edit mode. Usually it's the quantity that needs to be fixed. So 50 gallons of diesel go back into book inventory of tank 3. And if the customer has late invoices, you'll see this again. Now all we do is print the invoice. And here's the invoice. The taxes are now broken out separately, unlike the lump sum of taxes that showed on the delivery ticket. Commander's delivery ticket creation and conversion capability gives you the flexibility and accountability that you need to handle bulk plant delivery sales. Because of the great similarity of the delivery ticket program and the point of sale invoice program, there isn't much of a learning curve for users when going from one to the other. This program is in the Service Stations module. It is standard in the core Commander system. Commander will automatically assign invoice numbers. For each dealer, you can decide whether you want to enter grade total sales, as in this case, or you can decide to set up each pump meter separately. The last price you used in billing for this grade at this location will default here. You can change the selling price now, or you could have set up a new price in Commander's customer pricing program that would have displayed here. If you've had a pump test and calibration check, you enter the pump test gallons and these go back into the location's inventory. Notice the running totals in blue at the bottom of the screen. When you're done, save the entries and proceed to the next task. Remember, if you electronically import your sales data, then you don't have to key in data as you just saw. So now we create the invoice. Any uninvoiced sales will appear in the meters pane. You can enter consigned sales daily and aggregate them however often you want to onto a single invoice. If anything shows in any of these panes, that means it has not yet been invoiced. Choose the sales components you want and add them to the invoice. And save your work. Commander automatically takes you to payment selection and invoice creation. In this example, we want to create a net invoice after applying some credit card credits. Click the big credit card button. These are all the credit card batches which have been approved by the card issuer for this location. Only card issuer approved credits appear here. We don't want to apply all of these credits, so we unmark all of them.
Now we can pick the ones we want. Notice the display of the invoice amount in the upper right. The display gives you a running total of credit card credits versus the invoice total. Notice that the dealer has earned $79.37 commission on this invoice. Depending on how you set up a dealer, this amount can be shown on the invoice and not deducted from the invoice total, and it will therefore accrue to a dealer expense account until you pay it out, or it can be made not to show on the invoice, but be deducted from what the dealer owes you. We are going to put the rest of what is owed over to AR. In Commander, you can set up a dealer payment matrix of general ledger accounts that are allowable invoice payment options. No other forms of payment can be used outside of your defined accounts. Different dealers or groups of dealers can have different payment groups. The AR terms default is what you set up for this dealer as part of his AR profile. However, other terms can be used for any invoice by using the drop-down list and selecting the one you want. If this is done, an exception is written to the event log so that you can see who changed the terms on this invoice. The amount still owed is $5,918.72. That's displayed in the difference field. Our dealer invoice is balanced and ready for printing and distribution. Just click this button. The default is to view or print the current work, that which you did most recently. Notice the extensive filtering options you have for retrieving and reprinting invoices from history. So if a dealer calls and says he can't find his invoice from three weeks ago, that's not a problem. This is the Commander Consigned Dealer Invoice. It contains a lot of information for your dealer. The reason for that is, the more information this contains, the fewer questions your dealers will have for you. It's all right there. We see the net amount of $5,918.72. The dealer's commission amount is shown and it has been deducted from the total he owes you. The lump sum of credit card credits shows. But of course the dealer would want to know the details of the credits you've used. When credit cards are applied in the way this demo has shown, each dealer invoice has an additional page automatically created. And this page is the credit card voucher. The dealer can compare his batch totals with those that you have used against his invoice. This has proven to be a great improvement in communications with dealers and a real time saver for your office personnel.